Hello everybody, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install the CUDA Toolkit. First thing we'll do is uh, open up our web browser to my website, thegpu.com, and I'm going to scroll down here to the GPU tutorials. Then click on Installing the CUDA Toolkit. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to install and configure the CUDA Toolkit on Windows 10 64-bit. Now it is basically a four-step process, and there are a few pitfalls to avoid that I will show you in the video. Even though I have most of the requirements in print on my website, it will be worth your time to watch the video. So let's talk first about uh, the first step, and that is to verify that you have a CUDA compatible video card. Um, and basically, of course, that would mean an NVIDIA, later model NVIDIA video card. Uh, we'll begin by opening up the device manager. So let's go ahead and minimize this. We'll just right click on this here and select device manager. Okay, we want to look for the display adapters and then expand that tree there. And you can see I've got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Now, um, let's pop back here real quick to the to the website here. So um, now we're basically going to head over to the NVIDIA website and check for our GPU on their list of compatible video cards. All right. So we're gonna scroll down here. Basically, most of the video cards you can get out there for desktop computers are, are the GE Force products right here. So we're gonna click on this right here. And then we'll just basically expand this out. So we're looking for what's called um, compute capability and 6.1 or greater, right, are all of these devices, which happens to be their Pascal um, architecture there. And the Volta is coming out very shortly, which I'm super excited about. By the way, as you can see, I have this GE Force GTX 1080 Ti, and um, it's it's a fantastic video card. It's like a really late model video card. I figured I'd get it, um, add it to my collection. I also do a lot of cryptocurrency mining, so this is not all just for this video series. There, I can actually turn this into some Zcash or Ethereum or whatever's paying out the best at the time. By the way, I've got this EVGA GE Force GTX 1080 Ti FTW3. It's really good. It stays cool has 11 gigabytes of GDDR 5X memory. Uh, let's click on this here real quick. I actually happen to live like less than half a mile away from Micro Center here in Denver, so which is one of my absolute favorite um, electronics and computer parts stores out there. But anyway, we're gonna go into this here and we're gonna look at the specs on, on this video card here. So it's a really nice video card. You know, you got your core clock speed, your boost clock speed, the thing that we're most interested in here is the number of CUDA processors, which is 3,584, which is really, it's, it's fantastic. Um, you know, for gaming and stuff like that, you can look at the, these, these screen resolutions are just fantastic. Supports four monitors, 240 hertz refresh rate. Now the memory clock speed on these things is fantastic. 11,264 on the gddr 5 x memory there. 352-bit memory bus, and it can do basically the memory bandwidth is 384 84 gigabytes a second. It's it's phenomenal. Um, you can get uh, if we pop back over to here, right? Um, if you want to go like bare minimum here, the GTX 1050 is about uh, about as what I'd recommend on that. If you have anything less than that, I mean, you're really going to have a hard time. I can't guarantee that that the stuff I go over in my tutorials will you know be um, will work with the, the 5.2 computer, the 3.5, the previous <clears throat> versions of the CUDA support there. So um, a 1050, I mean, it's it's not too expensive here. If we just come over to Micro Center and do a GTX uh, 1050, right? Um, there's one for 179. Might be able to get even less than that, $149. And probably... Eh, you know, about $150 is, yeah, here's one right here. This one just happens to be an open box, but normally 129 for 115, right? Um, it's two gigabytes, GDDR5. It's like basically as low as you can go. But, you know, the thing about parallel programming is um, it's, it's not something to venture into if for the faint of heart. Um, and plus it does cost some money. I mean, you're, uh, and, it's, and, and it's really cool. It's the way of the future in my opinion, so. It's well worth it if you can, if you have the budget and can afford to do it. So, uh, let's go ahead and move back to my website here. So, um, let's see. It's important to note my uh, target 6.8 X or greater. Blah blah blah. Okay. So, 
That's basically ensuring you have a CUDA compatible video card. Now let's talk about installing Visual Studio C++. Now this step is going to be the most problematic. Now you may be inclined to go download and install the laser version of Visual C Studio C++, but that would be a mistake. Now unless you are a certified partner, which I happen to be, you most likely have to pay for one of the full featured flavors of Visual Studio. Now, however, we only need a very small piece of the studio and the rest is just overkill. Now, Microsoft produces a free version of Visual Studio called Community Releases. Now, it used to be that all you had to do was simply create a free mic account and uh, you were good to go. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case. You need to create a free Visual Studio Dev Essentials account, which is annoying because they ask you for a credit card to make sure you are a real person. You may or may not be able to get around that, but Microsoft changes it all the time there. So, um, let's... So basically CUDA 9, right, which is what I'm going to show you guys how to install. And technically right now, CUDA 9 is a release candidate. I'll go over that in just a second there. CUDA 8 is available out there, but within the very, very short future. As a matter of fact, probably by the time you're watching this video, CUDA 9 will be maybe released in full there. So they support the following versions of Visual Studio. Studio 2017, 2015, and both of these are the paid versions, by the way. And then they support the freebie, the Visual Studio Community 2015, and that's the one that's free with the Dev Essentials account. And that's the one we're going to try to go after here today, you know. Um, so, uh, getting Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition is no longer a simple task. They have archived it, and finding it can be somewhat difficult. But in the video, I'll point you in the right direction, and really the rest will kind of be up for you. You know, if you're watching this video, then chances are and you want to do parallel programming, you definitely have the wherewithal to go and, and uh, get this figured out here. But uh, basically, come over to Google Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition. Their official website is this one right here, visualstudio.com forward slash downloads. Okay? And when you, when you go here, there, they've, they've basically updated, Microsoft has updated the site for the latest stuff. So the Community 2017, the Professional, the Enterprise, so on and so forth there. Um, if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, they got a link here for older versions, right? And when you click on older versions, what's going to happen is it is going to bring you to this page here, okay? Now I'm currently logged in up here and I have a, you know, an account. I both have the freebie account. I went through the process of that and signing up and whatnot. And then I have my certified partner account too as well. But here's the, the 2015 where they've kind of archived it here. And of course, we're looking for Visual Studio Community 2015. When you click on this download, it's going to, you know, basically ask you to create the account, verify the account, and do all this account stuff there, right? Once you've got all that done, it'll take you to the downloads page and where you can get the Visual Studio Community 2015 and go ahead and download that. And, uh, and so once you get to that point, um, I'm going to bring up the install, right? We don't really need to, you know, I'll leave it up to you. You know, if you want to install some of the other tools for Visual Studio, that's great. What we're really concerned with is one of the options, and I've already got it installed on the computer, and I will tell you that the install is huge. If you do everything, it could be over 10 gigabytes, but, uh, you know, you're looking at probably about a gigabyte for just the C++ stuff and the rest of the, you know, pardon my expression, but bloat that goes with this here. But, um... Anywho, if you what you want to do is expand the Visual C++ tree and just basically click underneath everything underneath there just for you know to make sure you get it because what we're ultimately looking for is we are looking for under the Visual Studio 2015 make sure we get this developer command prompt for Visual Studio 2015 installed okay all right so that is what you need to do for the Visual Studio stuff and good luck with that. All right, let's move on here. The next thing that we want to do is install the CUDA Toolkit. Now this, this step is pretty straightforward and we're just going to click the link here. I'll keep this link updated to the latest download page, but we'll just click on that, right? Um, and it's very simple. You select your operating system, Windows, version 10, uh, whether you want a local install or a network install, I'd recommend a local install here. Now, um, this is, um, well, let's see, did they, Where's the nine capability? Oh, maybe they've already done the nine stuff here. Wow. Yeah, oh, excellent. All right. Um, when I was doing this tutorial literally two days ago, the CUDA 8 was still up there. So you can just completely ignore everything I talked about for the 8. So the 9 is here. It's a 1.4 gigabyte download. 
you can just click on that and once it's done downloading you'll be prompted for the installer right here which is just basically this simple install do an express install next and after this is all installed and everything like that i would recommend rebooting your computer just so that the c plus plus and the you know and the stuff that's added on here is all fresh and everything like that and updated in the registry so uh that's all fairly simple right there i'm super excited they got the nine out there you don't have to sign up for the release candidate anymore okay so um let's pop back to the the website here now the last thing we want to do is is configure the environment variables okay if you made it this far last step is to configure the environment variables for the search path for nvc.ex mvcc which is the nvidia c compiler okay and if we pop down here and open up a command prompt um yeah i did that actually rather fast let's just uh put up here search you can do cmd right command prompt okay we're gonna do cd backslash and i'm gonna do a directory nvcc.exe slash s okay and um that basically will tell us where the nvcc compiler resides on the subdirectories here and as long as everything is, has been set up here so you can see I've got the uh, the CUDA 8 toolkit and the CUDA 9 installed on this particular machine here, right? But here's the full path of that. So what we're going to do is come down here to the Windows search, and we're just going to start typing in environment variables. So we want to edit the system environment variables. And where it's like stuck into the background, okay? So I'll bring up this little window here. We're going to click on environment variables. There's two sections to this. There's user variables and there's system variables. On the system variables, we're going to scroll down here to path. Okay, select edit. And there's two of them that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that are in here. And that's this one right here, right? Which happens to be the whole entire path that's listed right here, okay? So you can see that's the path to the bin where NVCC is located. And then this, this one right here is basically on that same 9.0 folder. It's called lib nvvp, right? You wanna make sure both of those are in the path. Um, if they aren't, you'll want to add them in here, and um, then if you do have to add them in there, then you'll want to definitely close out of uh, your command prompt, maybe even reboot your computer, refresh the environment variables there. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and control C on that, and let's talk. Uh, we're just going to write a, a quick hello world program to test that the installation was successful here. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Um, We've got the regular command prompt open here. Now, um, I type in cd space backslash to get to the root. And I'm going to type, I'm going to make a directory here called uh, Akuda, right? Okay. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, uh, it'll go ahead and create one for you there. So I am going to pull this off screen real quick here. I'll be right back. Um, actually, you know what? Let me put this back. I'm going to change directories to the... Uh, a folder here and then I'm gonna check something here real quick I can't remember if I yeah just take just a second <clears throat> okay um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear my screen and I'm gonna make a directory here called hello world okay and I'll change directories to the hello world folder and I'm going to notepad up hello world.c, right? Pretty standard stuff here, right? We are going to uh, include the standard io.h, right? And we're going to hint main void. I'm not passing in any arguments to the main method. You know, and I'm just going to save this real quick. I think I'm going to use Notepad++. So it'll just be a little bit faster for the uh, video here. Let's close out of some of those other things that I got going on back on that. Okay, so we're just going to do a printf hello world from the CPU. Okay. Fairly simple, we'll just go ahead and do a return zero. And let's go ahead and save that. Now, uh, if you've been watching my other videos, I'm just using GCC for the compiler here. So we'll do hello world.c minus o for the output. We'll just call this file hello world. 
And if I do a directory here, right, we've got our hello world exe and our hello world.c file. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this. Hello world from the CPU, right? We are running off the CPU. Nobody, uh, that, that's totally obvious there, right? We haven't modified it a damn thing yet. So let's go ahead and we'll clear the screen. And I'm going to copy hello world.c to hello world.cu is the um, extension for CUDA C programs, okay? So we're gonna just go ahead and copy that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna type in NVCC, right? And I'm gonna hit enter on that. And what, what we've got is uh, actually NVCC, hello world.c, and we'll do minus uh, big CU, right? We're gonna do minus the output. And um, just so you can see the difference of the files, I'm just gonna call this plain old hello, so that will, so what we're getting is we're gonna get a fatal error, cannot find compiler cl.exe. Now, for those of you that don't know, CL.exe happens to be the Microsoft C++ compiler, right? And it's not in the path. So this is an ordinary command prompt. And uh, earlier in my video, if you remember me telling you about the C++ and then clicking the, the tree during the install and then making sure that stuff was checked. And the reason why is we need to, we can't just run the ordinary command prompt. We have to come down and we have to run the Visual Studio 2015 developer command prompt, okay? Looks like just a standard old command prompt here, but let's go ahead and change directories to the root, change directories to our CUDA folder, uh, change directories to our hello world, and let's go ahead and type in nvcc, hello world.cu, and on our minus in our output file will be named hello, and now let's hit enter there, okay? So the nvcc, which is the NVIDIA C, compiler there, went ahead and built everything. I'm gonna do a quick directory here so you can see. Now um, our Hello World EXE, our original one was 30,428 bytes. Our new one, Hello EXE, is the actual like GPU compiled version of this, right? And we can go ahead and run hello.exe and we get Hello World from the CPU. Nothing's changed as far as this goes here, but this just kind of, this kind of gives you a good explanation of where we're going from here. And if you get this much done, then you've installed it all properly there. And in my next video, I am going to basically show you how to create a hello world that actually executes on the GPU instead of the CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that and that, and just uh, leave you with my final thoughts. Stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will show you how to write a very basic CUDA program that executes code on the GPU. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.